Today, I'm joined by American broadcast legend, TV producer, and of course, game show host, Wink Martindale. Welcome in, Wink. Thank you, Lauren. It's a pleasure. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. And a lot of people know you as the most successful game show host there is in the world, but <laughs> you, you got your start in radio. So can you break that down for us and take us back to the very beginning? Yeah, I can take you back to when I was seven or eight years old, and I always wanted to be on the radio. There was a fascination to me about being able to talk into a microphone and hear yourself or hear whatever on the other end of a radio speaker. So with that fascination, uh, I always wanted to be in radio. And it so happens that my first job came about thanks to my Sunday school teacher, who happened to be the manager of a little 250 water in Jackson, Tennessee, my hometown. I bugged him and bugged him and bugged him. Chick, when are you going to give me a job? Chick, when are you going to give me a Finally, I caught him at a weak moment. And he said, come on. We went up to the fourth floor of the First National Bank building downtown where WPLI was located. He sat me down in front of a real microphone, something I'd been dreaming about for years, gave me some news copy and a couple of commercials to read. And I went through them like Grant going through Richmond. And so he said, you come down here tomorrow after you finish school. I was a senior in high school. He said, you come down here tomorrow and you do this well for the mayor. The mayor happened to own the little 250 watt station. He said, okay. you do this well for him and you've got yourself a job. I couldn't wait for school to be out the next day. Anyway, that was my beginning. Wow, incredible. And then that persistence paid off. It got you there after high school and it led you to WBHQ and Sun Studios in Memphis. And you worked with the rock and roll artists, the kind of the turn of rock and roll music, right? With Jerry Lee Lewis, Roy Orbison, Johnny Cash, and of course, Elvis Presley. So can you take me through those experiences and what was it like working at Sun Studios? Well, I consider myself so lucky to have been in Memphis in the mid-1950s when rock and roll really, really got started. I, I was so lucky to have been part of rock and roll history. Not only did I meet and interview so many of the iconic Sun recording artists that you mentioned, but their music truly changed the world and started what became known as rock and roll. And I was there to see it happen. I was especially honored to have met Elvis at the very beginning of his career. And we remained friends until he passed away. But it was an, wow. it was an iconic time in Memphis. Um, and so it was cool. such a pleasure to be a part of it. And in speaking of that, you said you met Elvis at the very beginning. And I heard and read that you, you're still the only person alive the same night that Elvis's music played. Is that correct? On That's the radio? Right. That's right. I happened to be at WHBQ radio where I did the morning show. I happened to be there that night. It was in July, 1954. And um, I heard a commotion coming out of the studio where DJ uh, Dewey Phillips, wild DJ, where he played records. And I thought, I'm going to go in there and see what's going on. Switchboard had lit up. And I found out that Sam Phillips, founder of Sun Records, had walked in with a, with a recording by this guy named Elvis Aaron Presley that he had recorded just two hours earlier. And uh, when Dewey put it on the air, switchboard lit up. He played it seven times in a row. And I was the one designated to call uh, Mr. and Mrs. Presley to find out where Elvis was. Naturally, with all the commotion going on, we wanted him at WHBQ. We wanted to see what this guy looked like. We knew what he sounded like, and it was mm -hmm. pretty darn good. The song was That's All Right, Mama. Mrs. Presley told me that he was so nervous about the record being played. He went to see a double feature Western at the Suzores number two. They went down to the Suzores, found him uh, sitting there by himself in a darkened movie uh, hall, watching this Western movie, whispered to him about the excitement that had been generated by That's All Right, Mama, brought him down to the radio station. I met him that night, and as I mentioned earlier, he remained my friend until the day he died. I'm the only person of six people in the control room that night who saw the beginning, truly the beginning, of Presley Mania. Wow. Everybody was pulling at him from all sides because he was, 
he was as hot as baked bread and getting hotter by the minute. And everybody wanted a piece of Elvis Presley. But he came on my show and did the first televised interview with me that uh, he ever did. And uh, it was it was after that interview on my TV show several months later that he made a transatlantic phone call after I had moved from Memphis to Los Angeles. And he helped me kick off my new dance party show with this transatlantic call. And everybody looked at me, you know, like, you know, Elvis Presley, how do you know him? You know, <laughs> so it was, it was a very special time. So the elephant in the room, the Elvis movie. How do you think that Baz Luhrmann, the director, painted the picture? How accurate from your perspective, since you knew Elvis Presley yourself and had the personal relationship and professional relationship with him, uh, did you like the film? What was your takeaway? Laura and I love the film. Sandy and I went to see it. We want to see it again because there are a lot of little things in there that we probably missed, but we haven't had time yet to go see it a second time. But we love the movie. I think that uh, uh, the director caught the essence of uh, Elvis Presley. I think uh, Tom Hanks as Colonel Parker could very well uh, win an Oscar or a nomination for an Oscar. And I think the same could be true for Austin Butler, who played Elvis. I thought he was just terrific. And uh, as far as the movie's concerned, it was... I think it was pretty doggone accurate. Uh, there were times when they had to, you know, uh, pick up the pieces from this area over to here because of time constraints. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought it was good. I thought it was an excellent movie and I look forward to seeing it again. Now, since you work so closely with Sam Phillips, how was Josh McConville's uh, character of Sam Phillips in this movie to you? Well, uh, the guy who played Sam Phillips, I thought, uh, captured the essence of Sam. I didn't uh, spend a lot of time with Sam back in the day, but I knew him pretty well. And I think the guy they uh, picked for uh, that role uh, played it perfectly. No doubt about it. Now, do you think that Elvis would have ever imagined a career like this going back to that first night whenever his first song was played on the radio? Lauren, uh, to be honest with you, I don't think any of us could have... Uh, possibly known what was going to happen down the pike. Uh, within the next year, uh, so much happened. Uh, Elvis became almost a superstar overnight, thanks to that little semi-country, that's all right, Mama and Blue Moon in Kentucky record, his first for Sam Phillips at Sun Records. But there was no way of knowing that night in 1954 that uh, what was going to happen, really and truly happen. It, it was just, you know, it's never, it had never happened in the past. And it's likely a story like Elvis Presley will never happen again. That's the way I feel. That's the true. movie has helped to bring about a, uh, a new interest, if you will, if I can use that word and put it in quotes, in this guy who was the king of rock and roll. Uh, it's going to bring so many uh, young people who were not familiar with Elvis back in the day uh, to Graceland. It's going to, it's going to do so much for the mystique, the magic of Elvis Presley that uh, uh, we won't even know uh, until another year or two goes by just what, what this movie has meant to bring the name and the persona of Elvis back in view with us again. In 1977, when Elvis did pass away, you created a nationwide tribute uh, on the radio chant, on the radio in honor of Elvis and his life, 14 hours worth. And now you're creating and, and kind of recreating that. Can you tell us about what you have coming up with the Elvis Presley radio special you're working I'm on? I'm glad you asked, Lauren. It's going to air the special 14-hour program, The Elvis Presley Story, is going to air starting on August 1st, and you can hear it on KWXY Music Radio, 92.3 and FM, and 1340 AM in Palm Springs, or KWXY.com. 14 hours, probably uh, 
I can say this truthfully. I think it's the most comprehensive piece on Elvis ever done. I believe it. Wink, you're a busy man. What else do you have that you're working on right now in addition to this special? Well, I have my radio show uh, every day on KWXY in Palm Springs. That's on six days a week, actually. Uh, wow. I do three hours of specials uh, with my past interviews of stars as my background for that show. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday in my time period uh, is the history of rock and roll. And so uh, that, that's, a, that's an award-winning show that's heard around the world. And um, I've also been working on a new podcast series called The Interview Tapes, which I'm producing with my wife, Sandy, that's launching in August. The Interview Tapes. After 70 years in broadcasting, I've interviewed thousands of artists. So each week, the podcast will showcase an informative interview segment from a featured artist. Listeners can find a link to the podcast on kwxy.com. So you see, I'm, uh, I came to Palm Springs, really, Lauren, to uh, sort of get semi-retired, but I, I don't think I've ever been busier. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Wink, it has been such a pleasure talking to you, learning your story, the impact uh, that you've had just with Elvis and um, being part of his life and sharing his story from your perspective, too. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Lauren. My pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. And hey, guys, make sure you are tuning in for that 14 hour Elvis Presley radio special. You don't want to miss it from Tupelo to superstardom. It's going to be streaming on kwxy.com broadcasting live August 1st. Well, the 16th will be the last day. And on the 16th, we're going to play the entire 14 hours uh, in one day. Oh, incredible. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then you will definitely have to look out for that. And then also the interview tapes. Like you said, you have thousands of interviews with people. So uh, we'll be looking out for that coming from you, Wink. Thank you so much for joining us, Wink. Thank you, Lauren.